Next chapter, get a good sleep to have a good life. Having good quality sleep is important to lead a healthy and peaceful life. We know that good sleep improves brain performance and our health. Apart from the duration of sleep, quality of sleep also plays an important role. In other words, just having slept for a certain time is not enough. We need to have deep sleep also. We spend about one third of our lives asleep. Even though we don't know how sleep works, it is certain that sleep is important for normal motor and cognitive function. It seems sleep is record for survival. Rats deprived of sleep will die within 2 to 3 weeks, a time frame similar to death due to starvation. Getting better sleep records a combination of lifestyle changes, sleep hygiene practices and in some cases medical intervention. Here are some tips for improving your sleep. Establish a consistent sleep schedule and stick to it. Create a sleep conducive environment, cool, dark and quiet. Limit exposure to screens before bedtime. Avoid caffeine, nicotine and alcohol before bedtime. Engage in relaxing activities before bed such as reading or taking a warm bath. Exercise regularly but avoid vigorous activity before bedtime. Consider using a white noise machine or eye mask. Practice relaxation techniques such as deep breathing, meditation or yoga. If you still have difficulties sleeping, talk to a doctor about possible medical causes and treatments. Remember, the goal is to create a relaxing and routine sleep environment to help you get a good night's rest. Next chapter, stay ahead in a rapidly evolving technology landscape. To keep up with the fast-paced world of technology, it is important to stay informed, learn new skills, embrace digital tools and continually improve. By doing so, you will be well prepared for the future and ready to face any new technologies that come your way. Read on for more tips on how to stay ahead of the curve. Here are some tips to help you prepare for the future of technology. Stay informed. Read articles, follow experts and attend events related to technology to keep up with the latest developments. Learn new skills. Stay current with new technologies and trends by learning new skills and expanding your knowledge. Network with peers. Attend industry events and meetups to connect with other professionals in your field. Adopt a growth mindset. Be open to new ideas and be willing to adapt and change as technology evolves. Embrace digital tools. Use technology to improve your work and increase your productivity. Collaborate with others. Work with others in your industry to share knowledge and find solutions to challenges. Stay curious. Ask questions, seek feedback and challenge yourself to think critically about technology and its impact on society. Focus on continuous improvement. Regularly assess your skills and knowledge and make a plan to improve in areas where you need to grow. By staying informed, learning new skills and embracing new technologies, you can be well prepared for the future of technology, especially learn about using AI tools like ChatGPT and BART to make your life easy. Watch the latest science and technology news videos at uh, youtube.com slash at qpt. Next chapter, easy to understand moral stories, parables told by Jesus in the Bible. Jesus told many parables or moral stories in the Bible to convey important messages and lessons to his listeners. Read below some of them. The Good Samaritan, Luke 10, 25-37. A man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and left him for dead. A priest and a levite came by but both avoided the man and continued on their way. But then a Samaritan man came along and saw the man in need. He had mercy on him and tended to his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. The Samaritan then took the man to an inn and paid for him to be taken care of. The moral of the story is that we should love and help our neighbors even if they are not of our own race or religion. The good Samaritan showed compassion and kindness to someone in need and Jesus encouraged his listeners to do the same. Prodigal Son Luke 15, 11-32 A man had two sons. The younger son asked his father for his share of the inheritance and went off to a faraway country to live a life of wild spending and partying. But eventually he ran out of money and was reduced to eating with the pigs. He realized how much better off he was when he was living with his father 
and decided to go back and ask for the forgiveness. When he returned, his father saw him from a distance and ran to him, embracing him and welcoming him back with open arms. The older son was upset that his younger brother was being celebrated and the father explained that his brother was lost but now was found and they should be joyful. The moral of the story is about God's love and forgiveness. Just like the father in the story forgave the youngest son and welcomed him back with open arms, God is always ready to forgive us when we repent and turn back to him. The story also teaches us about the importance of embracing those who have strayed and offering them love and forgiveness. The Parable of the Lost Sheep Luke 15, 3-7 a shepherd had hundred sheep and one of them went stay. Instead of leaving the lost sheep behind, the shepherd went out to find it. When he found the sheep, he picked it up, carried it back on his shoulders and rejoiced. In the same way, Jesus teaches, God values each one of us and will go to great lengths to save us when we stay. The moral of the story is about God's love and concern for each of us as individuals. Just as the shepherd in the story left the 99 sheep to search for the one that was lost, God will do everything in his power to bring us back to him when we wander away. The story also highlights the joy that comes from being found and reunited with God. This parable is often interpreted as a message of hope and encouragement to those who feel lost or far from God. It reminds us that no matter how far we want her, God will always be there searching for us and ready to bring us back into his loving embrace. The Shower and the Seeds Matthew 13, 1-9 A farmer went out to show seed in a field. Some seed fell on the path and was quickly eaten by birds. Some seeds fell on rocky ground and sprang up quickly but withered away because they had no root. Some seed fell among thorns and was choked by them, but some seed fell on good soil and produced a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. Jesus then explained to his disciples the meaning of the parable, saying that the seed represents the word of God and the various types of soil represent different types of people who hear the word. Those who hear the word on the path represent those who do not understand it and are quickly led astray by the devil. Those who hear the word on rocky ground represent those who receive it with joy, but they quickly lose their faith because they have no roots. Those who hear the word among thorns represent those who are distracted by the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth. But those who hear the word on good soil represent those who understand it, accept it and bear fruit. The moral of the story is about the varied response to the word of God and how some people accept it and live according to it, while others reject it and do not bear any fruit. The parable highlights the importance of having a good heart which is receptive to the word of God and allows it to bear fruit on our lives. The Good Shepherd John 10 1-18 The Good Shepherd is a story told by Jesus in the book of John in the Bible. The story begins with Jesus explaining that he is the gate through which his followers must enter in order to find salvation. He then goes on to use the metaphor of a shepherd and his sheep to describe his relationship with his followers. A good shepherd, Jesus says, knows his sheep and they know him. He is willing to lay down his life for them and will not allow anyone to harm them. In the same way, Jesus says he is the good shepherd who gives his life for his followers. He says that he knows each of his followers by name and that they are shaped under his care and protection. The story of the good shepherd is meant to emphasize the love and care that Jesus has for his followers and how he is willing to give his life for them. It also highlights the importance of having a personal relationship with Jesus and the security that comes from being under his care and protection. The story is meant to encourage us to trust in Jesus and follow him so that we may have eternal life. The Mustard Seed Matthew 13, 31-32 the mustard seed is a story told by Jesus in the book Matthew in the Bible. The story goes as follows. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed, which is one of the smallest seeds. But when it is planted, it grows into a large plant, bigger than all the garden plants, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the 
air can come and make nests in its branches. The story is meant to emphasize the growth and power of the kingdom of heaven. Just as the mustard seed grows into a large tree, so too does the kingdom of heaven grow and spread until it encompasses everything. The story is also meant to encourage us to have faith in the growth and power of the kingdom of heaven and to trust that it will continue to grow and spread despite its small beginnings. In conclusion, the mustard seed is a story that teaches us about the growth and power of the kingdom of heaven and encourages us to have faith in its growth and spread. It reminds us that God's plans for us are greater than we can imagine and that even small things can have a big impact in the world. The Last Coin Luke 15, 8-10 Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to a woman who loses one of her ten coins. The woman is so eager to find her lost coin that she lights a lamp and searches her house thoroughly until she finds it. Jesus then says that in the same way there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. The story is meant to emphasize the love and forgiveness of God who is eager to seek and save those who are lost. Just as woman in the story is eager to find her lost coin, so too is God eager to find and save those who have lost their way. The story is also meant to encourage us to repent and return to God and to be grateful for His love and forgiveness. In conclusion, the last coin is a story that teaches us about the love and forgiveness of God and encourages us to repent and return to Him. It reminds us that God is eager to save us and that His love for us is great and unconditional. The Wise and Foolish Builders Matthew 7, 24-27 The story of the wise and foolish builders is told by Jesus in the book of Matthew in the Bible. In the story, Jesus compares the wise and foolish builders who both built houses. The wise man built his house upon a rock, while the foolish man built his house upon the sand. When the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beaten up upon both houses, the house built upon the rock stood firm, while the house built upon the sand fell. And Jesus says that everyone who hears his words and acts upon them is like the wise man who built his house upon the rock and that everyone who hears his words and does not act upon them is like the foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The story is meant to emphasize the importance of following Jesus' teachings and putting them into practice in our daily lives. The rock is the story represents Jesus and his teachings which are solid foundation for our lives. The sand represents the world and its ways which are unstable and cannot provide a solid foundation for our lives. In conclusion, The Wise and Foolish Builders is a story that teaches us about the importance of following Jesus' teachings and putting them into practice. It reminds us that Jesus' teachings are a solid foundation for our lives and that we must build our lives upon them if we want to be strong and endure through life's challenges. The Wedding Banquet Matthew 22, 1-14 The story of the wedding banquet is told by Jesus in the book of Matthew in the Bible. In the story, a king prepares a wedding banquet for his son and invites many guests. However, the guests make excuses and do not attend the banquet. The king becomes angry and sends his servants out into the streets to invite everyone they find to come to the banquet, both good and bad. When the banquet hall is full, the king notices that one man is not dressed in wedding clothes. The man is thrown out into the darkness and the king says, For many are called, but few are chosen. The story is a parable and it is meant to teach us about the kingdom of heaven. The king represents God and the wedding banquet represents the kingdom of heaven. The guest represents the people of the world and the man without wedding clothes represents those who do not have a right relationship with God. In conclusion, the wedding banquet is a story that teaches us about God's invitation to enter the kingdom of heaven and have a right relationship with him. It reminds us that God's grace is available to all, but we must respond to His invitation and be properly dressed, which means having a right relationship with Him in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. The Talent Matthew 25, 14-30 A man was going on a journey, and he entrusted his possessions to his servants. To one servant he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one one talent. 
The first two servants invested the talents they were given and doubled the amount, but the third servant buried his talent in the ground. When the man returned from his journey, he asked the servants what they had done with the talents he had given them. The first two servants proudly showed him the doubled amount and the man praised them for their good work. But the third servant told the man that he was afraid and so he buried the talent in the ground. The man was angry with the third servant and took away the one talent he had given him and gave it to the servant who had ten talents. The story teaches us that God has given each of us unique abilities and gifts and it is our responsibility to use them to serve others and bring glory to God. If we do not use our talents, we are wasting the blessings that God has given us. The story also teaches us about accountability as we will be held responsible for what we have done with the gifts we have been given. The Unforgiving Servant, Matthew 18, 21-35 the story of the unforgiving servant is found in Matthew 18, 21-35. It goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a king who had a servant who owed him an enormous sum of money. The servant was unable to pay the debt and was about to be sold along with his family and possessions to repay the debt. He fell to his knees before the king and begged for mercy, promising to pay back everything he owed. The king was moved by the servant's pleading and forgave the entire debt. However, the same servant went out and found another servant who owed him a small amount of money. He grabbed the man by the throat and demanded that he pay back the debt immediately. The second servant fell to his knees and begged for mercy, just as the first servant had done with the king. But the first servant refused to forgive the debt and had the second servant thrown into prison. When the other servants saw what had happened, they reported it to the king. The king was extremely angry and called the first servant back to him. He said, You wicked servant, I forgive you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? The king then handed the first servant over to the jailers to be punished until he could pay back all that he owed. The story teaches us about the power of forgiveness and the importance of extending mercy to others, just as we have received it from God. When we are forgiven, we should forgive others and let go of our grudges. Holding on to bitterness and anger only harms ourselves and our relationship with others. The story also highlights the consequences of not forgiving and the need to be accountable for our actions. In conclusion, the story of the unforgiving servant serves as a reminder that forgiveness is not just an option but a requirement for those who follow Jesus. By extending forgiveness and mercy to others, we reflect the love and grace of God in our lives. The Rich Man and Lazarus, Luke 16, 19-31 the rich man and Lazarus is a story told by Jesus in the Bible, found in Luke 16, 19-31. In the story, there was a rich man who lived a life of luxury and excess, while there was a beggar named Lazarus who was poor and lived outside the rich man's gate. Lazarus was covered in sores and longed to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. When both men died, Lazarus went to heaven and was comforted by Abraham, while the rich man went to hell and suffered in torment. The rich man cried out to Abraham to send Lazarus to give him just a drop of water to cool his tongue. But Abraham told him that there was a great chasm between them and it was impossible. The rich man then asked Abraham to send someone back to warn his brothers to not end up in the same situation as he did. Abraham told him that if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone were to rise from the dead. The story ends with a reminder to be mindful of how we treat others and to live our lives with compassion and kindness. Next chapter, The Twelve Laws of Karma Every one of us wants to have a life with happiness, success and peace. Knowing the laws of karma and living our life according to those laws will be helpful to live the life that we want. Read below the 12 laws of karma. The meaning of the Sanskrit word karma is action. 
दो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कर्मा इज मेनली हाईलाइटेड बाई हिंदुज्म एंड बुद्धिज्म इट विल बी एप्लीकेबल फॉर एनी वन रेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ हिज रिलीजियस बिलीव द कर्मा इज समवर्ट सिमिलर टू न्यूटन दर्ड लॉ फॉर एवरी एक्शन दैर इज एन ईक्वल एंड अपोजिट रिएक्शन द ग्रेट लॉ वाट एवर वी पुट इन टू द यूनिवर्स विल कम बैक टू अस वी माइट हैव हेयर द प्रोवर्ब्स लाइक एस यू सो सो सेल यू रीप एंड वाट गोस अराउंड कम्स अराउंड The great law of karma is exactly representing them. It is also known as the law of cause and effect. As per this great law, you need to give money to others if you want to get money from others. You have to respect others if you want to get respect, etc. And note that karma is not an instant reward system. You cannot expect help from someone immediately after helping them, but surely you will get your reward at an appropriate time. The law of creation Life does not happen by itself. We have to make it happen. According to the law of creation, we need to actively participate in the appropriate things that are required to fulfill our desires in our life. Things won't happen automatically. We have to work on them to achieve them. Our surroundings reflect our inner thoughts. So we need to surround ourselves with an environment that will help to achieve our wishes. or in other words we need to keep ourselves at an environment that supports achieving our dreams or goals the law of humility we must accept something before we can change it do you want to change something the very first thing is you must accept the true reality of the current situation you cannot change something if you refuse to accept the present circumstances for example if you want to improve your study performance first of all you should accept the fact that you are lazy instead of just blaming your teachers college books friends or parents if you accept your laziness you will be able to correct it by putting some efforts and then you will be able to improve your study performance the law of growth by changing ourselves we change our lives any change should start from ourselves because we cannot directly control other people or situations we will be able to make them change only by influencing them indirectly by changing ourselves first magatma gandhi is also telling the same thing as you must be the change you want to see in the world if you want your children to study books instead of spending time uh, playing video games you need to influence them by studying books by yourself first instead of just asking them to do so Generally you have to take steps to improve yourself to get an overall improvement in your life the law of responsibility we are responsible for what happens in our lives we must take responsibility for whatever happens in our life irrespective of whether they are good things or bad things instead of telling excuses by pointing other people or places or things because you are the one who can control your life events happening in your life are just reflecting your actions so you have to take responsibility for any events in your life it is true that we cannot change everything in our life but once we develop the habit of taking responsibility we will be able to clearly distinguish between changeable things and unchangeable things by doing that we will be able to avoid worries by accepting the unchangeable things the law of connection the past the present and the future are all connected as for the law of connection the impact of your past mistakes can be reduced by doing good things now in the and in the future so instead of worrying about your past mistakes just start doing good things similarly our current mistakes or bad behaviors will affect our future so avoid doing any mistakes and each task in any work is equally important irrespective of whether it is the first task or last ta- task and whether it is a big task or small task the law of focus We cannot think of two different things at the same time. Basically our mind is not designed to do multitasking effectively. So it will be better to put our efforts on one particular task at a time. Moreover, the other perspective of this law of focus is when we focus on any particular one good thing, example spirituality, it is not possible for the mind to give its attention to negative things like greediness, anger, hate and jealousy. So always engage with a good thing to avoid any bad things. The law of giving and hospitality. Our behavior should match our thoughts and actions. This law highlights the importance of ensuring that our actions should reflect our deeper beliefs. According to this law, sometimes in your life you will be required to demonstrate your belief. So, your actions in practical situations should follow your belief. For example, if you are advocating equality, you should treat everyone in your life equally. That is, you shouldn't be a hypocrite. Your actions should reflect your heart. As Steve Jobs said, there is no reason not to follow your heart the law of here and now 
we cannot be present if we are looking backward the law is telling the importance of the below quotes yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery and today is a gift that is why we call it present thinking about old mistakes will make you sad and thinking about the future will give anxiety so always think about the present moment live in the moment never think hard about the past it brings tears don't think more about the future it brings fears live this moment with tears smile it brings cheers the law of change history repeats itself until we learn from it and change our path albert einstein says insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result so if you want to get a positive result stop doing the same approach that doesn't work learn from past mistakes and change your path based on the lessons learned apart from learning from your past mistakes you can learn from mistakes made by other people also by observing them the law of patience and reward the most valuable rewards require persistence patience with family is love patience with others is respect patience with self is confidence and patience with god is faith we should have patience in all situations for achieving great things we need to do a lot of hard work consistently persistence is the key to getting huge rewards success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out robert collier the real happiness comes by doing the right work not by getting the rewards anyway you will get the rewards at an appropriate time if you continue your work without getting distracted by the expectations of rewards the law of significance and inspiration rewards are a result of the effort and energy we put into it it is not how much we give but how much love we put into giving mother teresa every contribution we make to the world is a significant thing irrespective of whether it is small or huge our little efforts to do something to the world will inspire others to do more